In the day's other news, Amazon announced that it will split its new second headquarters between two locations, Long Island City in Queens, New York, and Crystal City, Virginia, just outside Washington, D.C. The online retail giant based in Seattle has pledged to spend more than $5 billion on the new outpost and create at least 25,000 new jobs at each site. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio welcomed the decision. We're going to have an opportunity here for tens of thousands of New Yorkers, everyday New Yorkers, kids who come up through our public schools, kids who go to our uh, community colleges and our four-year colleges to have opportunity at Amazon. And not just at Amazon, but we know that Amazon's presence is going to help to build the entire tech sector. In return, Amazon is expected to receive nearly $2.5 billion in tax breaks and incentives as part of the two deals. A tense calm prevailed in Gaza today after Hamas and other Palestinian militants accepted a ceasefire brokered by Egypt to end the recent wave of cross-border attacks. Foreign Affairs correspondent Nick Schifrin has our report. In Gaza today, a Palestinian boy wearing an American sweater played in the rubble of what used to be Hamas's TV station. What used to be Hamas's interior ministry is now a giant pile of debris. And a nearby high-rise is gutted, its walls and windows blown out, displacing Gazans like Mazen Tarban. Where will we go to? I was displaced in the 2014 war when my house was hit. I came and bought in a safe place. Now, where is the safe place? Before today's ceasefire, Israel hit 150 targets it said were connected to Hamas militants. And as always, the funerals were public. Men in Hamas uniforms carried a fighter who Hamas chief Ismail Khania says was killed by Israeli aggression. This is an open battle between us and the Zionist enemy. Only he is responsible for this crime and its ramifications. The bombing produced the deadliest and most dangerous round of violence in four years, across three nights and early mornings. Hamas released video of more than 400 strikes fired at Israel, targeting Israeli cities like Ashkelon, where residents shot cell phone video trying to save a woman from a collapsed house. In nearby Starot, sirens warned of imminent attacks, and residents carried a neighbor, who was Palestinian, killed by a Palestinian rocket. I'm terrified. Me and my daughter, we cried before. A lot of people cried out on the stairs, going downstairs. And uh, there's a lot of babies here. Everybody was evacuated outside, must stay outside. I hope that everything's going to be OK. But the attacks continued. Hamas released propaganda video of a missile strike on an Israeli army bus. And on Monday, Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Conricus showed a building damaged by Palestinian rockets and described Israeli airstrikes as necessary. All of them military targets belonging to either the Hamas or the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, again signifying the difference here between what the terrorists do and what we do. They target civilians and we target terrorist uh, activities. The violence was sparked by a Sunday Israeli special forces raid that killed two Hamas commanders, but also killed an Israeli lieutenant colonel and recent diplomatic progress. Both sides have been eager to address months of protests and a humanitarian crisis. 97% of Gaza's water is undrinkable. There are only four hours of electricity a day. So Israel recently allowed shipments of diesel for Gaza's power plant and an infusion of dollars so thousands of Hamas civil servants could pick up months of back pay. But today, that fragile progress must be rebuilt, just like the buildings that both sides know could be targeted again. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Nick Schifrin. President Trump fired off a series of Twitter taunts this morning, lashing out at the president of France over military spending and trade. This comes two days after his notably tense visit to Paris. Mr. Trump mocked President Emmanuel Macron for proposing an all-European army and suggested that France would have lost both world wars without the U.S. military support. The president also criticized French tariffs on U.S. wine as not fair. In a rare move, First Lady Melania Trump publicly called for the ouster of a senior White House official today. She issued a statement through her spokeswoman suggesting that the deputy national security adviser to the president, Myra Ricardel, be fired. It read, quote, it is the position of the First Lady that she no longer deserves the honor of serving in this White House. 
No specific reason was given, but it was widely reported that this stemmed from Ricardell's handling of the First Lady's trip to Africa last month. The state of Maryland filed a legal challenge today to block President Trump's choice to be the acting U.S. Attorney General, Matthew Whitaker, from holding the post. The lawsuit contends that Whitaker's appointment violates a federal succession law and that the post should go to Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, who has already been confirmed by the Senate. Whitaker had been chief of staff to former Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who the president fired last week. CNN sued the Trump administration today for revoking correspondent Jim Acosta's White House press pass, claiming that his First Amendment rights were violated. The White House stripped Acosta's press credentials following a heated exchange at the president's news conference last week. In a statement, Press Secretary Sarah Sanders accused CNN of grandstanding and insisted that the White House will, quote, vigorously defend itself. Democrat Kirsten Sinema has won the Arizona Senate contest, putting an end to a race that has been too close to call for almost a week. In a pickup for her party, Sinema narrowly edged out Republican Congresswoman Martha McSally to fill the seat vacated by outgoing Republican Jeff Flake. Sinema celebrated her victory last night in Phoenix. She is the first woman from Arizona to ever be elected to the U.S. Senate. Arizonans had a choice between two very different ways forward. One focused on fear and party politics, and one focused on Arizona and the issues that matter to everyday families. Arizona rejected what has become far too common in our country, name calling, petty personal attacks, and doing and saying whatever it takes just to get elected. Meanwhile, in Georgia, a federal judge has extended the deadline to certify election results for that state's hotly contested governor's race until Friday. And in Florida, officials are racing to meet their Thursday deadline for recounts in both the Senate and governor's races. We'll get the latest on Florida's recount later in the program. Envoys from Britain and the European Union have agreed to a proposed Brexit deal after months of stalled negotiations. British Prime Minister Theresa May will present the terms of the withdrawal to her cabinet tomorrow. But its fate remains unclear, since it still must be approved by her cabinet and by the British Parliament, and then ratified by the EU. The UK is set to leave the bloc on March 29th. There is word that airplane manufacturer Boeing failed to tell pilots about a computer software issue that is believed to have played a role in the deadly crash of an Indonesian jetliner. The Wall Street Journal reported today that pilots were not informed until after last month's incident, which killed all 189 people on board. Experts said that a new automated flight control feature can on rare occasions, caused the 737 to take a nosedive or crash. Boeing is working to fix the software. The trial of notorious Mexican drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman got underway today in New York amid tight security. Opening statements were delayed after a juror had to be dismissed. Guzman has pleaded not guilty to charges of drug trafficking, conspiracy to murder, and money laundering. If convicted, the 61-year-old could face life in prison. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency today announced new plans to limit pollution from heavy-duty trucks. It is one of the Trump administration's first efforts to regulate the industry rather than roll back environmental rules. The EPA has not updated its standards for nitrogen oxide emissions for big rigs in nearly two decades. And stocks extended their losing streak on Wall Street today, led by a steep drop in oil prices. The Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 100 points to close at 25,286. The Nasdaq gained a fraction of a point, and the S&P 500 slipped four. Still to come on the news hour, what is fueling California's deadliest wildfire? Several key races too close to call in Florida. How one public school district is taking a proactive approach to preventing teen suicide and much more.